Hey y'all, today in the Feral Kitchen, we're going to show you one of our absolute favorite things to do with deer. Just to prove to you that we don't necessarily just stand and make pretty pictures in front of our Orion coolers with our deer, we actually put them to good use. Buckboard Bacon Cure, the kind that I use, comes from High Mountain Seasonings. Now you can do all sorts of internet searches and find your own recipes, but to me this has an outstanding flavor. It's easy to use, got easy to follow instructions. We're using back straps. That's one of my favorite ways to do it because it turns out just like gorgeous little Canadian bacon medallions. But I've done it with the other roasts on deer and it turns out really good there as well. This just happens to be our favorites. I know it's tough to give up a back strap because that's one of the most succulent cuts on a deer. But trust me, this is just way, way worth it. All right, everybody's trimmed up pretty and ready to go to the dance. You see I've got them swapped out with the, the, the big ends cut and the small ends cut. And that's because later on in the, in the smoking process, small ends are going to get done a lot faster than the big ends. So I like to separate them out, try to keep the cooking more uniform. You also see I've got a scale over here. Now the scale is an important part because you measure this by weight for the cure per pound of meat. Don't want to do them like old Bass Pro. Yeah, that's about 10 pounds. You don't, you, trust me, you, don't want, you want an accurate measurement for this. So make sure you have a scale handy while you're doing this process. All right, the instructions call for one tablespoon and one and a quarter teaspoons per pound of meat. So we had four and a half pounds of meat. I'm just getting done my measures right now. Once you get it all put in there, there's really no better way to make sure that it's covered than to go ahead and get nasty with it. You want every inch of that meat covered with this cure. All right, once I've got them all covered in cure, I'm going to lay them as flat as possible. You can individually wrap these if you want to. But this is the same way that I do the, the bigger butts and stuff like that. So this works really well for us. I'm just going to squeeze all the air that I possibly can out of these. Alright, I got them sealed up good. They're nice and flat in the pack. They're going to go in the bottom of the refrigerator for 10 days. Some folks say flip them every other day. Some folks say flip them halfway through the cure. But the thing is, you want them to sit in this cure for 10 days. Now this will build liquid. It's going to pull out a lot of this moisture from the meat. So make sure if you don't trust your bag that you have it in something or your wife's going to be really mad at you for messing up the fridge. All right, just got them out of the fridge. We went through our 10-day run. Uh, I'm going to take them over to the sink. I'm going to rinse them off. And then this is the tricky part. I'm going to put them in an ice bath. The instructions say to do it for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. For us, 30 minutes, they were too salty. And if I went for an hour, it wasn't salty enough. So 45 minutes was, is the magic number for any piece of buckboard bacon that I've done. Set your timer. Don't screw yourself up by going to sleep and letting them soak too long because I promise you it won't be salty enough. Just kind of fine tune it for what you guys like, but for us 45 minutes has been perfect. Alright guys, just got done with our 45 minute run in the ice water. I blot them down with paper towels, try to get most of that moisture off of them. They're going to sit in the fridge uncovered for around an hour or so, developing a little, little bit of a shiny sheen to it. It's called a pellicle. The pellicle is what the smoke actually adheres to. So while that's going on, I'll be setting up the smoker. Going to truck roughly 225, somewhere around there. Uh, I use applewood to smoke with. It's a real good mild flavor. So hopefully next time you see us, these will be baking. Shooting for a 160 internal temp on that according to the instructions. And that seems to be about perfect for what we found. Oh, y'all can smell that right there. All right, we got our temperature up to 160 on it. You can see it's got a gorgeous color to it. I'm going to go ahead and try out the new slicer, so that'll be kind of interesting for me. First time I've ever run one of these. Let's see if we end up with all of our fingers after this is over with. <laughs> That's two plates of awesome right there. You can see I, I kept all ten, so I survived the slicer. Now any of these larger chunks that, that are the, the odd-shaped ends, just cut them up in little tiny pieces, saute them, put them over top of a bake tater or on your eggs, whatever you've got a hacker for. Those will be fine to eat too. But we're going to have to do a sample skillet on some of this. I can promise you that about right now. All right, you can see that I'm bagging it up now. I'm not even worrying with the vacuum packer. It won't last long enough around my house to worry about getting old. Uh, did fry some up in the skillet. And one thing to remember, it is extremely lean, so a touch of oil. As you fry it, and it will fry quickly, but you can see it turns out just gorgeous. And, and I've been calling it Canadian bacon. It's backstrap bacon, but it, it, it's a whole lot like Canadian bacon. That's what the flavor tastes like. So, all right. That's horrible. Send me all your backstraps. You do not need any of this. Trust me. Y'all take care. Try it out.